another classic competition hosted by the Violent Human Honor Society here at UC Berkeley. You've all worked so hard on your projects for six weeks, and it's finally time to present your results. This year, we've grown the competition greatly, doubling the number of participants and adding a new component to the competition, which was the literature, the video of the Reviewing the videos, it was clear how much time you've all put into researching and creating your environment and solutions, and we're all so excited to present them. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to announce that this year, for the first time, we have welcomed corporate sponsors passionate about encouraging bioengineering and students to sponsor BioGSC. We're working with emerging biotech companies, not only from Berkeley, but from across the world. The prizes that you win today will be given to your schools, allowing you to be involved in hands-on bioengineering and working towards making the products and ideas that you guys work on through this competition into a reality. We'd like to thank Amina Biotech and Mike Mini PCR, who are from the East Coast, and Italina, who is based in Portugal, for donating the prizes for this competition. First place prize for the synthetic biology category will be the new one, which is a desktop bioreactor platform that students can use to do basic synthetic biology experiments. First place in the devices category is going to be a mini PCR thermal cycler. The mini PCR is a crystal PCR machine that is fully interactive with a computer, tablet, or smartphone, and is about the size of a smartphone. And finally, the prize for the first place in the video competition is going to be a, a Bugolino, a Bugolino Freestyle here, which is an Arduino-like electronics platform that allows users to interact with biometric data using sensors such as EKG and galvanic sensors. All these components of Bugolino can fit in the palm of your hand, which enables the corporation to wearable tech. EEG basically groups brain activity based on the characteristics and intensity of the brain wave itself. And then by monitoring alpha waves specifically, which are correlated with brain uh, the symptoms of depression, we can diagnose this. So our actual device consisted of like an Oculus Rift headset, which administered our therapy, which in our case was uh, simulating a soothing canal ride. Uh, on using gate sensor blind gels. Uh, as a drug delivery mechanism to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease. So, uh, as you can see in this diagram, gastroesophageal reflux disease is caused when your lower esophageal sphincter uh, stays open and stomach acid flows back into the esophagus, causing what we commonly know today uh, to be heartburn. The was create an artificial lymph node to fix the lymph system. And the artificial lymph node had three parts, uh, stem cells, a casing, and a catheter port, for example. So we would have lymph cells inside the casing, and we would allow the lymph cell to grow. In the meantime, the casing would have microfluidic filters to do cosmic uh, properties that are the lymph node stage, so filter the casing. Okay, so our smart insulin pump basically has a few components to it. So it first of all has a microneedle patch versus a large catheter, which reduces the bulkiness of the pump itself. And it's easier for the child to carry around because current pumps are quite large. Um, and the pump is also attached to an application that can be accessed by the parents um, through their tablets or their phones. Each student had a seminar, and one of my instructors said, You're going to call 
don't sleep, don't sit in the front rows. Because it's really embarrassing for you and you know, dressed up as speakers, so just you know, probably go in the background. I actually went to Boston College in Los Angeles. Um, I chose the school for two reasons. One, it has a free two program at Caltech, and my father was actually a teacher at Caltech, so you know, I could go there for free. And we also had a good dad soccer team. Now, of course, what I worked on was technical warfare, which is not a way to start conversations. I have really didn't really know about technical weapons, but the idea here is how do you, how do you, uh, the Soviet Union at the time of this is all the world. Moving on to post undergrad slash graduate point. So that's me. Tom? Once you get into undergrad, you start having the classes that are more related to what you want to do. Um, you would agree, though, that it is nice to know ahead of time. It is nice to know ahead so, of time. So, this is what I used to do in high school. I would always read what's going on in the world of science and engineering. You should, you should. That way, you can see where the recent developments are, and and maybe find your call. If you can. And that's that's what I did, and I found my calling, and I've never changed my mind. Even though I'm hoping to do that. You could make fun of bringing this along. Yeah, they're not, but they're not the real thing. They're not the real thing. It's like not the decision point of health objective, nice for research. So by the way, it's even more like broad. Okay. The category, the first is <laughs> 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 Whatever your scientific passion is, I encourage you also to invest time for your social passion. As I encourage you scientists and engineers, it is your responsibility to use your intellect and ingenuity to overcome the next generation of problems. Often scientists assume that the fruits of our labor are for often distance. While this may be true in part, I'd like to remind you that the work you did over the last six weeks is already having a profound impact. I asked you to prepare a short video summarizing your project and the basic concepts that you apply uh, in your research. Those videos will be available to any student who just now discovered bioengineering. To the young student, your short video can just spark that night's nice lifelong passion as a first step. Whether or not you decide to pursue bioengineering in the future, I hope you're able to bring some of what you learned to participate in the competition. My goal for this year's competition was to expand the reach and impact of BioHSC. I want to make sure anyone interested has the ability to explore bioengineering. I also want to equip students with the tools to continue to explore bioengineering firsthand. As I took on the role of organizing chair earlier this year, I realized that BioHSC was already tumbling towards this end. As I attempted to recruit new schools, I received emails from students and students from Nevada, Texas, Illinois, and even South Korea. When I went to biotech startups and nonprofits, I wanted to point them to past projects to convince them that this event would work with us. I'm amazed at the words you've all put in already, and I'm excited to see what uh, is to come in your future seminar.